Before I start, of course, I would like to say uh, good going to my two favorite teams right now, uh, the Green Bay Packers and the Egyptian people. <laughs> The immigration debate does not just cover uh, who we do or do not let into the country, but rather covers the very society in which we want to live. In this case, immigration exists as a moral issue rather than uh, essentially a political or legal issue. We certainly hear a lot of rhetoric about how immigrants are criminals or immoral, but we almost never hear a word about the immorality of the United States policies towards immigrants. Except, of course, when they call for the further brutalization of immigrants in the name of morality. All immigration has push and pull factors. Opponents of open immigration, such as the Patrick Henry Caucus and their bill, wish to remove all the pull factors uh, which pull immigrants from their country to the United States by making their life in the United States a living hell. Yet this approach will never work until the United States addresses its historical and ongoing injustices throughout the world, but especially in Latin America, in which American policies have pushed people to immigrate. My argument will have five parts. First, I will talk about the nature of moral responsibility. Second, I will talk about the structure of injustice previously and currently present in the United States. Thirdly, I will talk about how this affects Latin America and Mexico in particular. Finally, I will talk about national liberation domestically and reparations internationally as the real solution to this so-called immigration problem. First, the nature of moral responsibility has always been a difficult question. Moral responsibility can be negatively attributed when a person or nation takes a course of actions which does not help the greatest number of people, but instead helps only themselves. Moral responsibility can be negatively attributed when a person or nation creates rules for others to follow but does not follow those rules themselves. Moral responsibility can be negatively attributed when the actions taken by a person or nation do not promote uh, virtue and values of society, but instead pushes society towards decadence, viciousness, and inhumanity. The actions of the United States, both in its creation of economic and political crises internationally, and also its deeply immoral treatment of those refugees seeking a marginal existence in the United States is immoral. The United States has not been a passive victim in creating the world political and economic refugee movement that affects it. The United States, if one would do well to remember, passed the Northwest Ordinances before it passed the Constitution. This law created the system for imperial expansion westward with only lip service of respect for the native indigenous people there. Soon they had swallowed all the lands from sea to shining sea and taken nearly half of Mexico. Those who would wish to deny Mexicans entry into this country would do well to remember that fact. Soon enough, the United States made its bold imperial ambitions clear without qualification. The Monroe Doctrine basically declared the entire Western Hemisphere as the playground of the United States. The United States constantly acted within its imperial ambitions, disregarding any and all rights or sovereignty in the Western Hemisphere. The United States intervened in other countries' affairs from the Mexican-American War, the Mexican Revolution, to toppling Democratic elected leaders from Chile to Guatemala. The United States holds a serious moral responsibility to these countries because of its political and military interventions. However, those forms of interventions, in some ways, pale in comparison to the economic damage done by the United States. The United States has engaged in economic policies which have absolutely devastated Latin America in general, and Mexico in particular. Um, under the guise of free trade, the United States has pursued economic policies which demanded that Latin American countries shred their safety net open up their markets to the United States, and force their poor citizens into the most desperate of situations. The United States has forced a particularly brutal economic reality on, Ma uh, on Mexico through NAFTA. The North American Free Trade Agreement uh, passed with the stated intention of increasing trade and prosperity between the United States and Mexico has instead opened up Mexico for the most ruthless exploitation 
by the rich corporations of the United States. Just a quick view of the statistics shows the incredible damage done to the Mexican people. More than 2 million Mexican farmers lost their land because NAFTA allowed large subsidized American agricultural corporations to flood the Mexican market with cheap subsidized grain. Yet the price of corn-based tortillas, a food staple in Mexico, has increased by 50%, making food that much harder for the poor, out of work Mexican farmer to buy. In addition, large retail corporations have moved into Mexico, destroying an, uh, an estimated 28,000 small and medium-sized businesses, throwing both the owners and the employees out of work. In addition, the wages along the border have dropped by 25%, with the combined effects of an increased labor pool and the destruction of Mexican unions by the Mexican government at NAFTA and the United States' request. The provisions of NAFTA and the Mexican government's willingness to carry them out has revealed the Mexican government to be little more than a puppet for American corporate interests. It's little wonder in this power vacuum that the cartels have gained such power and influence. Nevertheless, the United States spends millions of dollars on military aid to this corrupt Mexican government under the guise of anti-narcotics to keep the Mexican people suppressed. This has created an intolerable situation for the Mexican people. The average Mexican faces a terrible choice. The government of Mexico is far too corrupt to change. However, with American aid, it is far too powerful to overthrow. So the Mexicans must either choose to travel through the dangerous conditions to the United States, or to stay in Mexico and slowly die through starvation, sickness, and poverty. One would, simply ask, one would simply have to ask yourself, what would you do if you had to watch your family slowly wither away? The answer is clear. One would leave. One would leave by any, by any, by any means necessary. However, um, legal immigration requires that one either be rich, have a special skill, or have family within the United States. Each of these methods can literally take years to receive the green card for illegal residency and years more for citizenship. Previously, Mexican immigrants would come, come to work and then return home. However, the militarization of the border has made it nearly impossible for them to return home and, and once they have earned enough money to survive. The policies of the United States have created a prison on both sides of the border. Below the border, families are kept in prison in the most crippling poverty Above the border, workers are imprisoned away from their homes and their family. All of these policies have been created to serve the rich American corporate interests. The United States has a moral obligation to both of these groups of people. I have heard the anti-immigrant ar arguments, and none sufficiently address this. I have heard things such as, well, of course the United States stole the land from Mexico, but Mexico stole it from Spain, and Spain stole it from the Indians, and so on and so forth. That argument carries all the moral weight of a thief who says, I stole it last, so it's morally mine. <laughs> Anti-immigrants say things like, I and my ancestors just didn't do those bad things. I didn't pass NAFTA. Why should I be morally responsible? The hypocrisy of this position is staggering. Either you're responsible for the actions taken and thus owe an obligation uh, to those to return uh, reparations to those you've stolen from, or you're not responsible for the actions and you have no right to the privilege of those ill-gotten gains. So if you don't think you have a responsibility for the damage done to Mexico, then you should quickly pack up your things and return back to whatever country you came from because you are living on stolen land and you should not participate in any of this privilege. This shows, above all, the very narrow, imperialist, nationalist notion of property has no moral justification. When people talk about moral duty, it is for, uh, to protect our society and sovereignty. They are doing nothing or other than dressing up the most naked and uh, ugly worship of power and violence as a moral duty. The only real solution to this problem lies in recognizing the oppressed nations and a demand for real development in the countries damaged by the United States. The core essence of national liberation stands that as long as you don't hurt others, every community has a right to self-determination and freedom to choose their destiny. Immigrant communities in the United States have a right to their own language, education, culture, religion, and customs so long as it does not hurt you. And no, it doesn't hurt you to hear another language, different music, or see people eating different foods. 15 seconds. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, in, 
to uh, sum up, the answer is clear. For all of those claiming the anti-immigrant position uh, as their moral posturing, it is simply that, posturing.